The situation in Rohan is worse than we feared. The traitor Saruman and his armies of Urukai have swept through the lands of Kalanathon, raiding, pillaging, burning, and slaughtering. The Rohirrim are brave and strong, yes, but they are outnumbered and stand powerless against the Uruk tide. Once again, Middle Earth looks to Dolamroth to rescue the people of Rohan in their hour of need. For where was Gondor when the Westfold fell? Where was Gondor when the enemies of Rohan closed in around them? I will not allow Good King Theoden to forsake our age-old alliance, not for the sake of Denethor. The armies of Dolamroth will march out of Isengard and strike swiftly at Helm's Deep, for the fortress of the Hornburg is a beacon of hope and strength for the Rohirrim. And when the forces of the White Hand hear the horn of Helm Hammerhand bellow in the deep, they will know their doom is upon them. Greetings my friends and welcome back for episode 22 of our Dol Amroth campaign in 3rd Age Total War Divide and Conquer with Aegeo and Sus. In the last episode we, we did a bunch of things, right? We sallied out of Ostathil, we took down a big army here, um, we took Eastern Asgiliath, killing some armies there, took Caswandros once again, uh, just kicking Mordor's butt all over the place, uh, effectively pushing them back towards Moranon right now. They don't really have too many reserves. They still have Captain Gazburg out here. We know for a fact they only hold Galabrin outside of the, the Ash Mountains here. So once we push them back behind the Black Gate, things are looking pretty damn good. Over here we are of course leading the fight against Isengard. We took the Foldberg, sold it to Gondor, um, or gave it to Gondor really. Uh, because we couldn't give it to Rohan because I don't have a diplomat anywhere nearby them, which is a bit of a mistake. I really should have a diplomat uh, getting towards Rohan. Uh, can I get maybe an extra diplomat somehow? That would make things a bit easier because I do want to... If I take more lands in that region, I want to give them to Rohan instead of all giving them to Gondor. Because I've been talking to uh, Ghostfire, I believe it was, yes. Uh, the developer of the Dol Amroth part of the Sus submod. And he basically informed me, so the way the script works is that whenever we gain a settlement or win a battle, we gain points. Whenever Gondor gains a settlement or wins a battle, uh, we lose points effectively, they get more points. Um, and vice versa, if we lose battles, we go back in terms of our independence. If Gondor loses battles, we go forward, right? Um, but the way the script works is, it's not exactly as intended, but basically if I gift a settlement to Gondor, that means I quote-unquote lose a settlement and Gondor gains a settlement, so that makes me less independent, if that makes sense, right? So we want to avoid doing that as much as possible, because that's counterproductive. Then again, Ghostfire did take a look at my save file and it did inform me that we are indeed quite close to triggering the independent script. So basically the name of the game is capturing settlements, winning battles. Doesn't matter if it's a small battle or a huge battle, doesn't matter if it's a heroic victory or a pyrrhic victory, any win gives me extra points. Bearing that in mind, I think it makes sense if I move out an army uh, to take down Captain Gazbuk. And also if I move out an army to take down Kiridongul. Could do with some extra siege equipment, which I have parked over here, and indeed the extra pikemen. I think we'll just straight up start with the Battle of Keridongul. I think I've got all the firepower I need. There is a Nazgul there, Shivus, the Desert Sand, who has Temple Wards. They also have Great Beasts, but seeing as I got... I'll have three units of Ballistae? Yes. Do I need three units? I think I'm fine with two, right? Yeah, I'm fine with two. We'll have Imrahil move out and just any and all troops that are somewhat capable, mostly infantry. Don't really need archers or cavalry. Can I pick up some mercenaries? Namir? Nope, no mercenaries over here, that's a bit of a shame. I could pull some troops out of Eastern Asgiliath, not like they're gonna get attacked, because I'm gonna delete Gazburg in a moment. So extra javelins would be helpful against the great beasts and extra archers, I'd say. So effectively, I think I need to win slash capture in total for about like 10 points. So if I take it at Ungol, that's actually two points because I win a battle and I take a settlement. If I beat Gazburg, that's another point. That's three already. If I take Galabrin, that already puts us as five, right? Uh, might also win a battle here. Gondor might lose this battle against Dunland, we'll see. But effectively, we are quite close to reaching 
the end of the script. Which is going to be fantastic. But yeah, the reason why it's taken a bit longer is because I gave so many settlements to Gondor, which effectively put me back quite a bit. I thought it was a smart thing to do, but it wasn't because I didn't understand the script fully. But it is, of course, still a balancing act. Anyway, balance of power is smack dab in the middle, actually slightly against our favor, which I find slightly surprising. I'm, I'm considering, do I need to be more careful? Is there anything... Nah. I think the game just puts a very large emphasis on the great beasts. They, they have amazing stats, right? So the game's like, oh, they're going to do fantastic in the order resolve. But they're really not, because we're going to destroy them. All right, let's jump in. Ooh, this place is dark, gloomy. I don't, I don't really like it. It scares me. <laughs> All right, well, let's see here. It's actually very dark, man. I can barely see anything. Doesn't help that I'm recording when it's relatively sunny outside, but hey. Let me video game in peace, stupid son. Stop blocking my sight. <laughs> right, okay. Here we go. Um, plan is effectively just to break down the gate. I don't think these towers... Uh, they are labeled towered, but I can't remember them ever shooting. And then just shooting as many of them as we can. We do have a large selection of archers. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we got Ethereum Rangers. We have... Nimrod or Mariners, how do they compare actually? 8514, 8517. Oh, okay. Damn, Nimrod Mariners are really good. I didn't think they were actually on par with the Thelian Rangers. Huh, that's that's mighty impressive actually. Okay, well, cool. Uh, and then in terms of infantry, doo -doo 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 -doo, I think we'll mostly rely on our pikemen, as it's probably going to be a bit of a bottleneck fight. Javelins are also going to be quite important. Imrahil, I doubt we'll find a use for you, but we never know. Imrahil is that kind of badass that you'd always find some use for him. And they're all positioned all the way in the back, it seems. They might still move, yeah. Great Beasts having a great old time. I love their little tails, like, just, ah, uh, I don't know, they're kind of cute, actually. I don't think the Great Beasts are inherently evil, you know. Just like fell beasts, I don't think fell beasts are inherently evil. They're used for evil purposes, but doesn't make them doesn't make them evil, right? I feel like we should be able to train grey beasts and just stick some of our Lebanon marines on top of it and make them look less evil. Like we don't put like chains around them, but like I don't know, like ropes with like flowers attached to it. What the hell am I talking about? I just I just feel like grey beasts are. Treat it the same way as all the other Mordor scum. I think orcs are inherently evil. Maybe not in the beginning, but they've been corrupted for so damn long now that surely they must be. But Grey Beasts, I think that I think they can still be redeemed. Fell Beasts too, I think. I don't know, someone's gonna come down with the lore on me and be like, No man, you don't understand, Grey Beasts are literally Melkor incarnated. They might be. I don't know. Right, I'm not going to destroy the towers. I'm just going to actually assume the that they don't actually shoot us. Okay, he's bringing forth Black Uruks. I'm going to bring forth one of my pikemen and my Ethelian Rangers. Maybe the Ethelian Rangers have better range. Let's see, 220 meters, 180. Oh yeah, okay, so they have significantly better range and more missiles. Okay, never mind. In most circumstances, I would prefer having Ethelian Rangers then. Range matters. And amount of missiles also matters quite a bit. I think there might also be some variation in terms of how fast a unit fires. Which can make a unit better or worse. Alright, so he's parking his troops right there. If I put my pikemen here, and I put my Ethereum rangers in front, let them get that clear shot. They are protected by the pikemen. Can we shoot them? We should be able to shoot them. It's a bit of an awkward angle, but you guys are trained for awkward. Actually, you, if I put you a bit closer, just want to make sure that none of your 36 missiles go to waste. I'm not seeing any trees nearby that we can cut down and fletch into arrows, I'm afraid. Right, shoot them. We want to make sure that we treat our troops with care, because I don't have too many reserves going in with this army. Then again, once I take Iridongo, I don't need to push straight away. I want to rather wait until we take the Black Gate before I push any further. Okay, he's going on the wall with, with archers. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Is he going to fire on me? 
I mean, he probably is. He's got black hooded arches. Please, like, forget your arches and think you're melee for some reason. Hmm. If we're gonna fight on the walls, I want to get my Haven Guard in here. Ah, oh, never mind. He's bringing Alberts up. Hmm. I've never seen them try to hold the walls of Kiridongul. That's a first. Right, let's just keep shooting them. As long as they're not returning fire, then I'm fine with this. As long as I Great Beast are in the back. I don't want to take any risks. As long as he doesn't commit them. We're gonna take this step by step. Carefully. I could try to do some bullshit with the Blista. Let's see what they can do. They need to fight in an arc, though. If they fire right through, they're gonna hit my Athelian Rangers. We can't have that. I can only assume that Faramir is already dead. I'm gonna put Tracer Rounds on, but I think we're hitting them. Oh, yes, wonderful. I mean, the Maulers aren't exactly the biggest threat, but you know, they're armor piercing. We rely on our armor. They might actually be more dangerous to us than a typical Black Uruk unit. So I don't mind taking them down. Okay, perfect. Wish I already had a trebuchet. That would help immensely. I could fire on those guys on the wall quite a bit easier. Alright, let's keep it up. I'm going to bring in some extra archers, actually. So we can start fighting on the walls on the... The ones on the wall, sorry. English difficult. So far so good. Getting some free kills. I think some shots might like grease some of them on the wall and then fly down and still hit some, which is perfect. Not like I need double this. I know they have great beasts, but that's where the Leben and Marines come in. Okay, they're moving. I think I might have scared them a bit. Are they pushing out? No. Maybe. What's it gonna be, Sauron? Okay, I think he's pushing out. Pull back the Thelian Rangers. Yeah, we got him. We got him on the move. Perfect. I might have just found a purpose for him in a hill then. Pull back. Let them take our pikes head on. Even guard, get rid of the flank. There we go. Gets the poking, boys. Poke, poke, poke. Hold the line. Hold the line. And we fired in this blob. Yes, the blobbiest of blobs. Oh, crap. He brought his Greebeast already over here. That's a bit, a bit scary. I'm going to put my Ballista units. They're going to go home already. Let's already give the Greebeast something to worry about, eh? If we can get them to Rampage, that would be mwah, chef's kiss right there, but I think... I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I'm not sure what causes Beast's Rampage. Like, is it tied to their morale? Is that how it works? So if they are led by one of the Nazgul, they are less likely to route? I'm not sure exactly. Alright, he's already nudging my Haven Guard. That's not ideal, but I think if I pull the Haven Guard back, I'm going to lose more. Same with the pikes. I'm going to keep him there. That might die a bit because of those great beasts, but if I pull them out, I think they're a hell of a lot more likely to die. Come on, Lebanon Marines! Move your ass! Don't pull a forelong on me. Move, move, move! I need you guys. You melt those grey beasts like it's nothing. Yeah, my Haven Guard's getting absolutely destroyed. That's okay. It's fine. Maybe I should have saved some ballista bolts, but that's okay. That is alright. As I said, we don't know if the Great Beasts are inherently evil, so we don't need to punish them. We need to give them a second chance. Pull back now or I will javelin you. You leave me no choice. I'm sorry. There we go. And one's already down. I'm telling you, man, if you need to counter Great Beasts, get javelins. If you need to counter trolls, also get javelins. And if they're armor-piercing javelins, that's even better. These are not armor-piercing javelins, but they still get the job done rather well, so... But it's bringing his temple. He's bringing everyone. That's just kind of good, actually. Uh, I think we want to get some extra infantry in there to help out our pike line. 
Though the pikes are holding rather nicely, it would be cool if we can flank as well. I'm trying to move Imra Hill a bit, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do anything. Oh, he's still got some green beasts in the back there. I'm going to tell my Lebanon Marines not to fight at will. For the glory of Numer, I doubt you can charge from this right angle, but I still want you to. Dol Amroth! Uh, just get in there for a wee bit. My archers might be doing some friendly fire, but I, th I actually think they're doing quite well. Right on the temple wards. Kill Shivus and the entire lot will start running. I'm actually surprised that the AI is being so aggressive on pushing out of Kiridongul. Doesn't happen often. Typically they just kind of stay in the back and fight there. Alright, I'm going to send more archers in. To fight in the blob. Firing in the blob is always a good strategy. Right, the pikes are holding rather well. They've only lost about 25 lads. I'm pretty sure they've killed a whole lot more. Oh, that Grievous is still alive. Oh, okay, I didn't see that. I thought he was dead. Well, I can't actually hit him because the unit... He says they're out of range because he thinks they're over there. And they're prioritizing my Lebanon Marines. That's actually fine. Let them draw the fire. That's perfect. Alright, lads. Soldiers of Gondor! You are more than soldiers of Gondor. You are soldiers of Dol Amroth. Which comes with the pay raise, yes. Try to shoot as many temple wars before they reach the front line, because they'll carve their way through my pikes as if it's nothing. Kind of don't want my infantry to be stuck against the Great Beast, but that's okay. We also have the one Brave Haven Guard over here. Oh, it's actually the Lieutenant. There's a <laughs> Great Beast kind of just lurking through the wall, like, Hello guys, what's up? <laughs> you having fun yet? Does that mean they're in range? Nope. So there's one Great Beast just effectively stuck inside the wall. Okay, and there's two. Okay, I thought we were. I thought we already killed two, and that there were only five in total. But I guess I was wrong. Alright, the temple wards are pushing their way through on that right side, which is unfortunate. My haven guard are dead, which is unfortunate, but I think they'll heal. Because I, I kind of want to get them retrained at some point. If I can do that. I think that was an actual somewhat charge against the temple ward, so I'll take that. They're kind of charging me though. This battle's going to be a bit of a slog, I'm sorry, but that's not a whole lot. I, can, I can't even move around if I wanted to. There's no path around. There is a gate here, but that's if you come from the other side, from within Mordor. I lost another unit, and I'm not sure... Oh, that's the Ballista Cruise. Right, right, right. I pulled them back, so that makes sense. I need to pull back my Lebanon Marines, though, because if they get destroyed by the Temple Wards, then I'm in trouble. I need the Lebanon Marines to kill the Great Beast. Alright, things are looking rather good here. 11% for 38. He's sending his Temple Wards. They are taking a bit of a beating. But they are very, very strong though. I think I just need to keep charging with Imrahil. Just, I don't think any charge is going to be really good, but maybe just adding it all up will be enough. Alright, Lebanon Marines, stay ready. Marines, I have a very hard time speaking today. Curse you, Temple Wards. Curse you. The cab is trying to charge with the being stopped by their own units. It's terrible. Okay, this infantry blob is just not working out for them. Oh, okay. The Grey Beasts are moving. Throw your javelins, mate. Throw them now. Surely they must be close to being dead. Crap, don't let them disrupt our lines. Ah, oh, frick. I do blame the AI for effectively cheating their way with the Green Beast, like, stuck inside the wall. That's... They should have already been dead, to be fair. And again, they're not really killing anyone. They're just kind of running through me. Surely they must be close to being dead. Careful, Limit Hill. Pull out, pull out. Ooh, you might get stomped by one of those Green Beasts. Ibrahil, don't die. Imagine if he dies in Kiridongo, that'd be horrible, horrible, horrible. Javis, what are you doing? Take down those great beasts. Great beasts, that's what you need to throw at. Come on. Come on, don't let them do stomp, stomp, stomp. Are they throwing? I can't tell if they're throwing. 
These green beasts are really ruining my day right now. Oh yeah, they pushed the numbers up in terms of my casualties real quick. My javelins don't know how to deal with them. Okay, one went down, good. Just kill them all, please. I'll feel a whole lot safer if that did. I'm also not sure what's up with that on their footman, but they're constantly exhausted. <laughs> I think they got my physique. Oh, there we go, they're running a mark. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. No, they're running right into my lines, unfortunate. If only they ran a mark a bit sooner. Right, okay. Well, babies are done, I think. Yeah, just don't run into Imre Hill, please. Hello? Can you uh, shoot them and then everyone else can focus on the blob again? So they save Imre Hill. Uh, if you want to make love to the ballista, that's fine. You can have it. Ugh, I don't trust this beast. Go away! Alright, stop fighting. Let it go home. See, it means no ill will. Don't kill it. I'm not sure who's still fighting. I thought I told everyone to move. Or change their target. 34%. Yeah, we took a bit of an extra beating there. It's okay. It is alright. We're being led by Imre Hill. We'll heal a lot. He's the healer. Oh shit, he's running to... Oh, I got some Harander Footman in reserve. I forgot about them. Oh, I got someone in reserve back there as well. Who's that? Oh, Knights of the Silver Swan. Didn't even realize they were there. Wow. Not like they really serve much purpose. Uh, as long as Shivu's lives, they're not gonna break. That's a bit of a problem. Even if I surround them like that. And effectively... They are in a terrible position. Flank them! Not sure if this is a good flank. Nah, it's not really doing much. I just need, like, armor piercing units, but I just have access to none. Get yeah, no armor piercing units whatsoever, but. At least I don't think so. I might be missing one or two, but. Yeah, I'm running low on infantry real quick. Oh, is that an actual charge? Because that might save my life. Eh, uh, somewhat. Oh shit, we're getting countercharged. They're surrounding me like crazy. Imra Hill, get your men out of there! Should be alright. That is Imra Hill. Yeah, he's safe. But now my lads are getting stuck fighting Orc host in melee and those temple wards are still up to 73 for crying out loud. You know what? Imre Hill run inside. Let's take that precious town square. See how they react, eh? If I have to wait 12 minutes, I will wait 12 minutes! Curse you, Shivus, curse you! I'll pull in my extra knights here. Just looking at the green and the red, it's such a messy fight, but I think we're... I think we're winning it. My Nimrodal Mariners are strong in melee. I'm gonna send Imrahil to try and take the town square and hopefully... to distract... Shivus. I'm not sure if that'll work, we'll see. But the Great Beast's dead, that does make me feel a wee bit more secure. Is very much, in our favor. Very much? 50 for yeah, okay, you know this. Please, let the Temple Wards run back in like panic. Oh, I think it's working, I think they are pulling back. They're like, oh shit, the town square. Mm, some of them are, which is really good. Making it much easier to take them down when they try to retreat. Yeah, they're like, oh no, we need to go back. The keep is in danger. Alright. No, they're kind of pulling back, kind of not. That's okay for me. Their numbers are dropping, but not my numbers are dropping as well. But once I hold Kiridongol, I don't really need to defend Minas Morgul all that much. Definitely when I take the Black Gate, because then there's no one's going to attack Minas Ethel. And then I can focus everything on Minas Morgul. Uh, Kiridongol. I feel like I need to rename Kiridongol to Haldir, though. I don't want to rename Minas Ethel, because that's such an iconic name. But we lost Haldir in the defense of Minas Ethel, so I feel like he deserves 
He deserves a settlement to be named after him. That's the least we could do to honor this sacrifice. Yes, run you fools, run! I'm out of ammo, I'm out of troops, I lost a lot of good men in here. I hope we heal plenty, what a grind. What a grind of a fight. Long battle as well. But worth it. With Kuridongul down, I just can't imagine them being able to train that many more troops in their other settlements. I mean, Durthang is still a good one, Moranon is still a good one, but that's kind of it, right? Losing Minasithil and Kiridongul, at least on this front, will slow them down dramatically. Oh, these temple wards really costing me dearly. And there's still 50 of them left. And Shivus right here still looks relatively healthy. He doesn't really care all that much. But if he comes here in this area, that's what I can... That's Imre Hill's fun zone, as I like to call it. Because that's where he can actually do calf jives. But as long as Shivus lives, they're not going to break. Which is most unfortunate. The battle would be dramatically easier if Shivus would just have a heart attack and die. But no. He just had to go ahead and survive. Now he's having an identity crisis and doesn't know if he needs to defend the town square or the walls. At least I'm getting some free shots in, eh? I'm finishing off the rest of his units. Good. Uh, I'm bringing some around on guard. That's okay. It's not the biggest problem. Knights of the Silver Swan. Some of his troops are actually starting to ride as well, which is surprising considering he's still alive. Typically when there's an ass school on the field, they don't rout at all. Right, I'm going to pull him in the hill. I don't know. Right, let's pull him back and let's kill Shivus. I've had it with that punk. 52 temple wards or not. I know, I know, I know. It was on purpose. Get rid of that Moran on guard. Please don't die to a lowly Moran on guard, thank you. Alright, Shivus. Your reckoning has come by means of Swan, Hong Kong. I don't even know what sound swans make, really. Do they make any sound? Because Hong Kong are geese, you know? I mean, I've got some swans living not very far from where I live, but I don't think I've ever heard... Ah, uh, they're just kind of like... chitter like ducks, like... Quack, 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 right. But I'm not sure if that's really a typical swan sound, right? I mean, sometimes when I pass by the swans, they just randomly yell, Do you hear the tower ring? Which really freaks me out. I'm not sure what that is all about. But, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. Right, let's ship and swan. 14 temple wards remaining. Shivus, where are you? Shivus. Shivus the fool. She fool. Nah, that doesn't work. Alright, spineless women. Oh shit, is that ballista tower randomly firing? What? It's the first time I've seen that tower fired. Alright, we got them. Finish him off, lads. I lost a lot of good dudes today. 62%. Whew. That is not great. But, we have taken Kiridongo. And we healed... Quite a bit. Quite a bit. I will by like 20%. It is amazing. So Shivus is gone. His army is gone. Heroic victory, the game thinks. Okay, I wouldn't call it heroic per se. Oh, the pikemen. Whew. A lot of friendly fire though. That's not great. I thought the angles were better. Nimrodal Mariner's taken most casualties. Thing on range of 319. They might be more accurate as well. Alright, there we go. Kirdongul is ours. Some beautiful heroic music playing in the background there. I love it. Right, 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 Kiridongul is ours. Ah. Part of me wants to occupy it, because we got Imrael in there, so public order is never going to be a problem. Right, Kirithaldur. It has a nice ring to it. Let's repair the citadel, because we did destroy that gate. I can get a royal swan guard here, probably because of a guild house. Uh, what guild house might that be? No idea. I have not a clue. 
Not as far as I... Oh, it's from the... Oh, it's a Royal Swan God, right. So that's an extra general once I can get them. Which is only 15 turns. That's not that long. Right, uh, we need to destroy some stuff. That doesn't do anything for us. Stuff that doesn't work for us can get destroyed. Okay, no, that's good. Um, let's get some culture. A library. I don't think there's any unity in culture. Nope, 100% Melkor Shadow. Right, I need more troops. Infantry. I have no infantry to be sent. Uh, I guess I'll send, like, whatever I can muster. <laughs> Which is pathetic. Part of me wants to just send Isner in, because he has a unit of the Minas Ethel Guardians, of course. But, uh, we'll be fine. Right, let's move out with Erkirion and most of his men. Uh, can I just leave behind, like, one unit of Coastal Wardens? Is that enough? 50%. No, not enough. Alright, let's wait a little bit longer. I do want to send some troops from Pelargir to Kaswanjos, because they can get retrained there. Um, I think their Hidim can also get retrained there. And we also have Beratar moving up north. Right, he can actually go towards Kaswanjos. Uh, no, take the northern path, mate. Or, alternatively, I could place him. Let's see. Alright, they're happy. I need more siege equipment all over the place, really. So, what I'll do is... Put Isnir in Kaswandros, but first we kill Gazbug. What have you got, mate? You got trolls! Cool. And a bunch of crap besides that. Right, let's save, let's kill another army, gain some more points towards our independence, and clear up the road toward Cass Swandross. Rightio. I mean, this is a pretty nice army, right? I'm very happy to have it. We got siege equipment, we've got horse archers, we got the entire shebang. Um, let's see, infantry, just gonna put you in the back for a moment. Missiles. Ah, the only thing we really lack are missiles. Right, okay. Well, who needs missiles when you have White Knights of Ethelon, right? Or just White Knights as they're called now. To be honest, I mostly just want to get rid of the trolls with my White Knights. And have the Royal Swan Guard. But the Knights of the Silver Swan, apologies, I always mix them up. Just crash into their arches. Uh, wait, why are they positioned over there? Why are they in such an awkward position? That's just... That's just mean. Absolute... No, I'm not going to start cussing. I'm not sure when this episode will go up. I assume it will go up on a Sunday. Because um, I'm recording it on Friday. But tomorrow, which is Saturday, that's crazy how that works. Uh, I'm going to be doing my special celebration stream for hitting 20,000 subs, which is incredible. It's going to be a really fun stream. I mean, by the time you're watching this... It's already happened, so I hope it was a really fun stream. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And also, I'm celebrating 20,000 subs, but by the time I'll be doing the stream, I mean, we're already close to 21,000 subs, which is absolutely incredible. So thank you all very much for your support. I typically don't ask for likes and comments. I only really do it on the first um, episode of a new series. But the support on the Lamroth as well, not just on the first episode, but on all the episodes. It's been absolutely tremendous. Like, all the likes, all the comments, the views are also crazy. Like, people really enjoy the campaign, which makes me very, very happy, because I enjoy it as well, right? So, thank you all very, very much for your support. I hope you all can make it there on Saturday. But if not, you can always watch the, uh, the VOD normally, the video on demand, whenever that goes live. So, keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be something... At least the plan for the stream is something that no one has ever seen before. Haha. <laughs> Which is always a bold claim to make. I'm not sure if it's a claim I can actually solidify, but we'll see. 88 Cavalry, smash them. Swan smash. Yes. Keep shooting those trolls. Don't let them reach my battle lines, please. Nice shot from the catapult. I heard some bone crunching. My favorite sound bone can make. Good old bone crunch. Alright, hit the archers. Keep shooting the trolls, mate. Oh, Jesus. That was very crunchy. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Lost some of my lancers there. That's fine. Keep shooting the trolls. Shoot the trolls, mate. 
Uh, no, I want my where my javelins that out. I was hoping we'd be able to have already killed some trolls, but that seems to uh, well not be happening, which is a bit of a shame. I need the ballista. Uh, I need the javelins. I always mix them up. Throw. Wonderful. Right. Um, we're gonna have to do some some heavy lifting then if they don't wanna if they don't wanna die. Which is most unfortunate. My micro is not good today. That's okay. As long as it's good tomorrow, then that's all fine and dandy by me. Knights of the Silver Izzy. Alright. I mean, my, my goal is to reach 50,000 subs by the end of the year. But I don't think that's going to happen. But you should always be ambitious, right? And Lord knows I'm not ambitious outside of YouTube. I don't really care too much about ambition and bullshit corporate jobs. But this, ah, this I enjoy. So I'm actually more likely to be ambitious with it. Which is weird, I guess. YouTube doesn't really pay the bills, but I do enjoy it a heck of a lot more than my day job. That's not my general, right? Good. <laughs> Slightly worried for a moment. Just for a wee moment. Didn't think that Erkirion or whatever his name is died, but... Well, you never know. You never know. Hit them and they'll break, I'm sure of it. Break. Okay. They will break eventually. What I said is not wrong per se, just delayed. Damn. Losing 8% is definitely more than I really should be losing. Is he being incompetent? Part 22. Alright, this will make him break. Come on, lads. Shove that lance. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even need to finish my phrase. They knew exactly where to put that lance. Catapult going ham. Catapult actually doing some work. Even breaking them. Wonderful. I mean, I'd break if I was getting shot by a catapult, even if it's wildly inaccurate. I'd... I'd get the hell out of there, mate. Don't want to get stuck in the fire line of a freaking catapult. Alright, get them to run, and then just... take care of the halberdiers. I mean, if we just want to shoot them, that also works. Because I'm not really losing anyone by doing that. From back. Oh, there we go. We got 90%, so we can end it here. 9%, I think we'll heal some. 7%, yeah, 120, I mean, that's not too bad. For killing as many as we did, that's fine. We mostly lost... Gondon Infantry, oh. Probably because they were up against trolls, right? Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's not too bad. I can, I can deal with that. This army's still plenty strong, so no worries. Alright. Execute him. I wonder the way of the script works. If I take a fort, does that count for anything? I doubt it does. I mean, forts don't really work the same way settlements do. Oh, isn't it can't keep the peace in Cast Wondros? That's surprising. Um, what if I just chuck in an extra unit? I don't know. Okay, I guess peace was never an option then. Well, okay. Um... What we'll do then is maybe swap out Erkirion for Isnit. Is he really better? Oh, he's a really good governor. Okay, we'll do that next turn then. Um, right, anyway. I've got money to spend. So, and I've got nothing to spend it on because I'm building everywhere. There's always like a little construction sign, so... Can I get some troops, maybe? That'd be cool. I don't want crap. Don't bother me with crap. Man, I'm just maxing out both in building and training. It's wonderful. I've got more money than stuff to spend it on. Let's get more boats, why not? When in doubt, buy a yate. That's what rich people do in real life too, right? So, I, mean, I wouldn't know, but I can pretend. That's some of, some of these guys north already. Let's go sit in forts. I need to somehow get my troops like organized. I know there's ways for like putting up waypoints and all that kind of fancy stuff. Ooh, get them, please. Actually, no, retrain the ones we already have. Because then it only takes one turn, which is fantastic. Um, yep, yep, yep. But I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm too lazy to get, like, proper supply lines and shit. Can we actually retrain the 46 one? Thank you. 
And all my settlements are so bastardly wealthy. That's not even a word, but I'm still using it. Right, well, I also have a catapult in there. I'm gonna send them north, the siege equipment. Now they're a bit pissy at 60%. I'll give one of the Nimble Mariners to that location. And you go north towards Gaswangos. Um, I mean, those Knights of the Tirithyr, I'm also going to need to send them home if I want to get them retrained. Right, ooh, lads. I'm not sure if I need to invest in, like, the farm and pikemen per se. I'll keep them for the memes, but... I feel like I'm still forgetting about armies that I got lined about. Have I got any troops just not doing anything right now? Not really. I'm just looking at like the big big numbers. But Egeon, yeah, it does have a lot of troops. Okay. Um, I mean, Isengard actually, not that big of a garrison then if they're not up there. Let's get a diplomat here actually. We can send him to Rohan. That works. Alright, I think we can press the end turn. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but... I mean, we scouted ahead, we didn't see anyone here, right? Oh, we saw Gus. Gotta be careful for Gus. If I can just take a quick detour to Galabrin, where Mukar is, the last of the Southron, okay. Then we can effectively just quarantine Mordor, right? Which is great. <laughs> Uh, we reached that point of the campaign, I think, where we've become unkillable. I think maybe the stats won't point in that direction, but effectively we are the strongest faction, right? Don't think there's anyone that can really rival our rule. I'm just trying to think, like, another wife is big, but our troops don't compare to ours. Ooh, Captain Ishtar coming with a big army. That's slightly upsetting. <laughs> Might have to organize my troops a bit better than to make sure we have enough manpower. Ah, yes, extra general, more than welcome. Turlin. Civil disorder. Yeah, we'll check in a moment. Where is Turlin? Where is he? Where the hell? Turlin, 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 Turlin. He's in Ostatil. Oh, okay, I missed him. He spawned to Beratar because he adopted him. But then the game just puts him automatically in like the nearest settlement, which is perfect because we get a free governor in in Ostathil. So says that guy can then move to Minasithil. I mean, that doesn't look like a scary army, to be honest. What I want is a catapult in Kiridaldir. Ballista is less important. Javis could be helpful. I'm going to put like these three Gondos Spearmen. I mean, 150 mm, Coastal Wardens will be more helpful than 3 Spearmen, I would assume. Da, da, da. Right. Oh, you can't make it that absolute do not. Why am I such a... Mm. Right. Whoa. I mean, we got a lot of archers, but we basically have no infantry. I mean, we have the Harondor Footman, I guess. I think we'll be okay. So, Erkerion, you will govern Cas Wandros. Isnir, you will lead the fight. I think I want to take Cas Wandros. Uh, sorry, Moranon first. Galabrin is not that important. Once we take Moranon, I'll send a quick, short, small army to attack Galabrin. That will work. I'm also kind of scared of Isengard attacking Cas Wandros. I hadn't really considered that. But we do border them at Kalanhad, and they're probably kind of angry at us. <laughs> Understandably so, I suppose. Right, let's upgrade the military dockyard there. Amonethor got a mining network, wonderful. Let us get... Hmm, what do I want? I want to retrain them, why not? And get stables. Gobble Merlon got great roads, so it's becoming even more wealthy. Let's upgrade the farms then. Actually, let's not upgrade the farms. Let's upgrade the leather work so we can start building a barracks there at some point. Uh, let's get an inn, why not? Eastern has got chicken farming, so we're inching ever closer to hitting our population cap there. So I don't want to build anything that takes too many turns, right? Do we get the library? Why not? 
can do with some extra culture. Uh, Kate Hall did go to the library already. Let's upgrade that to a school. Educate these filth. And cast one just got repaired, but it's gonna be need more repair. Um pop up up and then queue up the library again. Right? Do we need cultured actually? Now I'm having some doubts. Ah, we could do with some extra culture, why not? Eastern Asgiliath is at 60%, that's not enough. But Beretar can go sit inside of it. I can move these two Nimitable Mariners to Kirith Haldir, they have enough range. What if I merge the ones I already have? Take a quick nap in Minas Ethel. Merge them, send in the fresh... Oh, they can't reach Kirith Haldir. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Alright, we'll still move them there for the next turn then. I'm gonna need more men, and I think the quickest way to get them will be from training them locally, I suppose. At this point, I would take like Territorial Guardsmen. That 16 defense is enough to just keep the enemy busy whilst my archers do the killing, right? That's that's my line of thinking here. Okay, and Gondor has lost the Foldberg. But that's fine by me. We're neutral to Dunland. We are not at war with Dunland. Shall we lead an attack on the Hornberg? And gift it to Rohan, because that doesn't mess with our script. As you wish, without question. I'm going to wait one turn, so I can make sure that we can give it to Rohan right away. And I will go for the Hornberg. Can I leave behind like a small garrison and like not have public order issues? I don't need cavalry in the attack, I can leave just all my cavalry. I can do that. Right, I'm already going to put them on the bridge. So we have more movement points once we attack and try to pull back. Just hope that Isengard doesn't go for an attack on us. The thing is, if I can attack Hornberg and then pull back to the bridge, that's enough movement range for me. I think we might have enough for that. Oh yes, that would be epic. Right, I think I'm gonna press the end turn then. I mean, I probably have more troops being trained, which is fantastic. But I need to get them organized, which is proving to be tricky. Um, let's just go over our main settlements real quick for unit production. Uh, we have started to get another sizable army here. Oh, okay, oh, this, is, this is good. I'll take all these guys. In any end, bringing in uh, guys that need retraining. We got a bigger fleet. Okay, disembark. Disembark. Bork, bork. We can actually retrain the Knights of the Tirithire. Wonderful. Great, okay. No, I think I'll take that. I think I'll take that. I think we might have another army ready then. If I join these forces. Yes, wonderful. Okay. Uh, right, let's press the end turn. I think public order issues should be resolved for the most part. Oh, almost, very close. Both are at 65%. Like, what if I just send, like, one horse there? 70%, wonderful. What if I send one horse, or, like, yeah. 75%, wonderful. I think we have fixed public order everywhere. We've done it. We've saved the Rome. Right, let's press the end turn. I should be rounding off the recording somewhat soon, but if I can squeeze in another battle, or not another, but if I can squeeze in a battle for Helm's Deep, then that's 100% worth it, right? Absolutely epic. And that shouldn't mess with the script if I give it to Rohan, right? I mean, I'll still lose a settlement, so I'll lose a point, but I'll still gain a point from winning the battle, right? The thing is, I, I could try holding the Hornberg, but I don't think that's going to be... I don't think that's smart, really. I think I'm better off giving it to Rohan to try and breathe some new life into them. Have them lead the resistance against Isengard. I'm just kind of showing them the way how it's done, right? The way of the horse. They need to embrace it. They get their own. The Lord of Isengard is dead! Oh! I wanted to kill him myself. That is most unfortunate. <laughs> and Eastern Asgillith is ready for an upgrade. Wonderful! We can actually, like, rebuild Asgillith then. And there's no attack on Kirith Haldir. Great news. And I can squeeze in extra troops. Merge some of the men. I know some people are opposed to me merging, but in this case I feel like it's warranted because I'm going to make sure I have a stable defense here. 
Right, okay, wonderful. I have more money and... Ah, oh. oh, I should like move towards Moranon. Smart man. Scaring me a little bit with those great beasts. So I think I'm going to lay siege to Moranon but not attack straight away. I think I'll wait a little bit. I think I could do for the attack right now and they're not in range yet. We'll see. First things first, assemble an army. Uh, I want the new ships. The fancy new fleet. No, you have a treat. Right, uh, let's see. Uh, the Knights of Tirthai go first. They're maxed out on experience, armor, weapon upgrades, the whole shebang. They are absolute beasts. Then we'll get the Seaward Lancers. Have we got any Seaward Lancers here? No, no, yes I do, never mind. And the White Knights. Then I don't actually need the uh, Amrothian Squires. There's four cavalry is more than enough. Then we'll do... Let's do the Nimrod on Mariners next. There we go, two of them, that's perfect. I'll take Arch Militia as well. Not the best, but they'll do. I mean, they're not terrible, to be honest. Three missile attack, 12 defense. They'll kill something. Next up, Pikemen. Pikemen, Pikemen, no Pikemen here. Then I'll put Haven Guard. Then I'll put Gondor Infantry. And if I can pass by a fort then and pick up some siege equipment. I actually got like room for a couple extra units. Maybe Javelins, like Coastal Wardens, one of them. That's a nice organized army, I'm kind of happy with that. Right, let's sail in this direction and pick up a catapult and a ballista. That's two more slots. One, two, then I got two extra slots still. I mean, I could pick up some troops here, I suppose, if I reorganize real quick. Right, anyway, construction report. Ballista maker in Dolamroth, catapult maker, straight away. Don't even think about it. We want to get trebuchets as quickly as we can. I had to think of the word there for a moment. Baratan, public fountains, uh, public baths then for more growth. Minas Ethel got the university, wonderful. So culture should be skyrocketing, yes it is. Let us get an armorer. Mist Fenost got great roads, perfect. Let's start upgrading the port some more. Estala got governor's quarters. I love saying Estala. That's such a nice ring to it. That means we can get barracks there. Culture should be... Oh yes, perfect. Good, 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 good. That means I can pump out even more troops. Hordenard got upgraded roads. Let's get chicken farming. So we can make that a large town and get more and better roads. Okay, Swandros got the library school. Actually, no, we have enough culture. Let's go for a port then, for more money. And the Order of Bottom of the First was repaired, but I can't retrain my Talon Knights just yet. 20 turns, 8 turns, no, sorry, 11 turns for the catapult. Okay. Well, Moran is on the siege, so at least no one will be able to make it out. Nor can they attack me, actually, so we're relatively safe just waiting a little bit. I'm not going to be waiting a long, long time, don't worry about that. I'm not going to cheese this, but what I do want to do is take the friggin' Holmberg. Right. Let him walk. Sup, my dudes? You're going to try to chase me, but you won't be able to. Because you need to get through Dunland land, and I'm not sure if they'll let you. I think Dunland might be reevaluating their alliances, considering our show of force here. And if Isengard loses both the White... If they lose, effectively, in the time span of five turns, the Orthanc, the Hornburg, and Saruman, that faction is pretty much gone. Like, they have no raison d'etre anymore. Lord Borgu, conqueror of the Hornburg. Not for long. So what have you got? Faction leader, oh, okay. Regular bodyguard, okay. We have, let's see... Uruk Reavers, which are basically berserkers from Wish.com, and we have the Urukai Crossbows, who are pretty damn scary. We need to show them proper respect. These guys, not so much. Right, let's kill the White Wizard, eh, the Brown Wizard of Isengard. Alright, the there we are. The Deeping Wall. Right, so effectively, push the ballista up, destroy the gate, run in there, and liberate the place. Ah, oh, it looks so nice from a bird's eye view as well. You can already hear the horn of Helm Hammerhand. 
bellowing in the deep. <laughs> Alright, so we are scared of the crossbows. We're not so scared of anything else. So I'm just going to park my troops. I mean, this is what Saruman should have done, right? Instead of putting his troops right in the open field of, like, the elves. He should have put them behind the slight mountain over there. Was Saruman actually aware that the elves would show up at Helm's Deep? I mean, in the movies, that is, because in the books the elves don't show up, right? But was Saruman ever aware? I have no idea. Not that the elves made that much of a difference, right? I mean, maybe Helm's Deep would have fallen a lot quicker if the elves weren't there. But without Eomer showing up, they would have fallen regardless. Elves or not. There you go. The Swanberg. If I was holding the Hornberg for myself, I would rename it. And I know some people are going to be clamoring in the comments for me to hold these Solomons. But I think uh, it's dangerous on the one hand, because Isengard is plenty powerful still. We need to show them respect. And if I leave Angranost undefended, then that's just asking for Dunlan to attack me, which I don't want to happen. Um, and on the other hand, we want Rohan to, like, recover. I want Rohan to have a good game. They're my fellow horse lords. Out of all the factions... Law wise, I respect them the most. And if I don't give them Isengard, or sorry, if I don't give them Helm's Deep, I don't think they're ever going to recover. Helm's Deep is so important to them in terms of trading troops. It's their main castle, right? Alright, if you're going to park your troops in front of my ballista, then don't mind me if I just shoot a couple times at them. Why not? Where is my white wizard? There he is. So white, so wizard. Okay, tracer rounds are uh, falling short a little bit. Can I get some pikemen as well? Nah, no, I don't want to. Oh, send in these pikemen. I didn't want to send in my captain because that's a bit of a waste. Where are the crossbows? They are literally in the worst position. Thank you. I really want to know where Saruman died, actually. Last time we saw him, he was like parading around Edoras, I think. Maybe Gandalf caught up to him. He was all on his own, though, so any somewhat decently sized through hidden force would have easily taken him down. How do we compare? 1023, 1120. So that's slightly, ever so slightly better. I could wait for my Nimrod on Mariners, but I don't want to cheese them too much, right? I want to have a good fight. No, don't shoot. I just said I don't want to cheese. I do want the Pikes to show up. And the Haven Guard. We'll just overwhelm them. If I can get my Nimrod Manners on the wall, then I will shoot. But only because I'm also fighting in melee at that point. Alright, uh, send in the lads. Uh, you walk, don't run. To battle! Victory seems certain, eh? I wouldn't be so sure about that. There we go. The Hornberg is ours. It belongs to the Horse Lords. Not to the filth of Isengard. Oh, he's putting his crossbows up the wall. He learned. He learned. I should have kept my mouth shut. Gave too many ideas. And the Reavers are holding the Deeping Wall, which is a little peculiar, since I'm not attacking the Deeping Wall. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have done like, a huge siege battle with siege towers and ladders and all that jazz. Uh, are you okay, crossbows? Seems they're having a bit of an identity crisis. Uh, I'm not judging, lads. I am not judging. I know what that's like. But You should get help. I should get help. But I don't want to get help. Alright, where's the general? Where is he? I'm not spotting him. Oh, there he is. He's kind of walking in the back, commanding his men to fight better. Genius. Modern-day military genius. Crossbow is still having a cry. Oh, no, they moved on to the Deeping Wall. Why is the AI so certain I'm going to attack the Deeping Wall? Uh, you guys might want to run because I think they're going to shoot you. Unless they're going to fight at my Nimrod Mariners. Yeah, that's my Mariners they're shooting at. Well, two can play that game, you son of a bitch. Alright, they're going down fast. Give them a volley, lads. Show them how we fight in Dolamroth. Bloop. 
I really like the model of the Urukai though. Just like their teeth as well. They got different teeth. Like these guys. Uh, actually, this guy's got like more like brown teeth. This one's more red teeth. Those are like yeah, more yellowish teeth. We got teeth variation. Look at that. Oh. I love the helmet design as well. These are some of the best looking models, I'd say. Not just like in game, like texture wise, like technical level, because I I don't know enough about that. But like when they made the movies and they had like the the Weta workshop making different kinds of armor, like they always look really cool. The dwarves look really cool, but Isengard just looks. They look so damn cool that for the Hobbit movies, a lot of the Gundabad orcs just use the same armor pretty much because you can't make them look any cooler. It's so ah good. And I also really like the contrast with the Sauron Mordor orcs, right? There's more of them, yes, but they're more like wearing whatever scraps of armor they can find. These guys, they got manufactured armor, steel plates, you know, uniforms. You can actually like tell their command structures based on like, guys with different helmets and shit, kind of like the Romans did. It just ah, it works so well. Alright, well the general is close to being dead, which is perfect. I kind of want to put my own Nimrodal Manners up here and then have them shooting down on them. But we'll see if that's necessary. Right, finish them off! Good, yes. We have slain! I'm not even sure what the proper name is at this point. The Chieftain of Isengard? It's not White Wizard, that much. Hello Reavers! I got my pikeman just in time on that position. Damn, the Reavers are going hard actually. The thing they're actually kind of a shitty unit that I always make fun of. They're doing quite quite the work here. Maybe they got a bit of a buff because they used to be like tragically bad. Can I get you up here? Oh I can. Take positions, keep them busy lads. Come on, keep moving. Damn, my pikemen are getting destroyed! What? Probably because they like forced their way through my position and my pikes so don't seem to be fighting back to be honest. Not sure what happened with my pikes there. They performed excellent against the bodyguard and then promptly got crushed by some reaver boys. Come on. Can you not fight on them? Ah. Oh, that's a pretty trash position if you can't fight on them. The best place to fight is like if you put them up here and then have enemies down here so you can fight in that line. But in this case the ramps are kind of being a nuisance. Maybe I can lower their crossbows back. Because they're just kind of chilling on the wall. What if I sit on the town square? Yes, that's lowering them back. Shoot if you can. Oh. Okay, so they're coming down now. So hopefully I can get them in that... Why are you three down there? Why is it whenever there's trouble, it's always you three? Oh, they're going up the wall. They're going up the wall, the bastards. Alright, get your bows ready. Shoot! That guy just ran up to me with a sword and then kicked me instead. What an absolute dis... What an absolute chat! It's like, you see, I got this sword. I don't even need this sword. Right, but I'm going to surround you and it's going to be... It's going to be brutal. You don't want to fight Haven Guard when you're surrounded. Although my Haven Guard are actually kind of getting their ass whooped for some reason. Also, why are you guys not either fighting or shooting? My Haven Guard got destroyed. Oh, this battle went horrible, actually. So many things that should have gone better just going poorly. It's fine. We'll still win, but that should have gone much better, much cleaner. It's okay. If this happened earlier in the campaign, I would be more annoyed, but right now I've got more than enough manpower. And the way things are going, I might be able to train some of my own troops in Angranost before long. We'll see. Yes, be awed, my friends, be awed. 259 ain't bad for taking the Hornberg head on. Still not sure what happened to my pikemen where they just suddenly dropped dead. I guess I can't let them fight on their own. I wish I had access to like a higher tiered pike unit, because the Mbrothian pikemen are still relatively low tiered with their pikes, so I still kind of like using them. But all in all, that's not a bad result. The Lord of Isengard is dead! Again! I guess the term is chieftain then. 
Right to you. Wonderful. I'm going to sack it. And then, first of all, I'm going to pull back my lads. Ooh, I can't pull back to the bridge. That's unfortunate. But I, maybe if I move here, I can go into hiding. No. Alright, let's just hope we don't get attacked by an Isengard army then. <laughs> Alright. Hello, Edoras. I am really surprised you are surviving. I'm even more surprised that Theoden is alive. How many campaigns does Theoden outlive Saruman? That doesn't happen all that often. And I didn't even kill Saruman myself. Not to say that if I hadn't taken Angranost, maybe Saruman would still be alive, but it's quite surprising. Anyway, I have a present for you. The Hornberg. It's yours. Keep it. Do I want anything in return? Don't think so. Your power is supreme, apparently. And your wealth is bankrupt, so I'm not sure how you're surviving, but here you go. How could we refuse such a generous offer? Imagine being Rohan, you lose your stronghold, and then suddenly this guy shows up and is like, Hey, we want it back. Here it is. Take it. I get a bunch of free to hit him there. Wonderful. Malak, you return to Angrenost. Next, we might just do an attack on Ginyar and give that back to Rohan as well, but we need to recoup a little bit. Right. Okay. Let's get an extra spy, because that's hella useful. Really, really nice. Okay, so we have a new army moving. Under the command of Admiral Duralath. Pretty nice army. They're sailing up the Anduin to lend their support. Let's sneak a spy into Mordor. Okay. There's Orkestalad looking mightily underfanded. Right, okay. I'm gonna keep my spy. Mm. No, I'm gonna pull my spy here. I need to make sure that if they move an army from Galablin to Cast Wanderers, that I'm defending it properly. I will move one ballista. Maybe two, actually. No one's gonna attack Eastern as Gilead. Cast Wanderers, on the other hand, might get attacked. I'm loving the music as well, even though we're gonna be copyright strike, I don't care at this point. Right, I think that's another end turn then, eh? I am going to round off the recording, don't worry, I just want to press another end turn, just to see if anything crazy happens. And if not, we might already get some administration out of the way so we can start the next episode with the Battle of the Black Gate. I think that's going to be quite a fun fight, if indeed they haven't reinforced it, which I hope they haven't. And by reinforced, I don't mean putting troops inside the Zanon, because I know they can't, but right next to it. Then again, I might be able to do a night attack with Isnir, I am not sure. It's also very poetic that it would be Isnir, the, the surviving general of the Minas Ethel Guardians, that would take the fight to Mordor at the Black Gate, right? He might have lost Minas Ethel back in the day, but now he is ready for his revenge. Alright, come on then, Mordor. Nothing. Nazgul returning. Unfortunate, but not the worst news. Isengard is... Okay, 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 I just wanted to... I'm going to cheat! Because the game was going to toggle the fog of war for me, but it happened so fucking quickly and had a million messages popping up. Right, Gondor has taken Kalanhad again, wonderful. I mean, that's not great, because I want to gain independence, so I don't want Gondor to do well. The Hornberg has been fortified as well. Theoden moved there right away, he's like, alright, you know what? I'll never let it fall into the hands of the enemy again. Even Lothlorien is doing quite well. Isengard still pushing hard in the north. I don't think Captain Aernidarnathon Aernidarnathon will be successful. But he will try, and I respect that. Prince Frumgar. So Theodred has died in Eomer too, I presume. That's bomber. <laughs> uh, anything else? I'm not going to check Mordor because that's cheating. Though Guldur doing still quite well here. The Wooden Drum. They're holding out. Dale's doing okay. The Wind is doing surprisingly well. Rune is struggling somewhat. Khan seems to finally be pushing as well. As Warlord Orash sizing up Mataram, but they have a lot of troops in there, so good luck with that. Angmar is doing quite well in the north, however. But Fornost is brutally defended. My lord, good luck with that, Captain Gangleren. Alright, cool stuff. Surprised Rohan is doing as well as it is. We will take Ginead once we see an opening for it, but right now we need to rest a little bit. Let's get some construction out of the way. Teridoros got an armory. I have built literally everything I can. Now we play the waiting game. 
right blacksmith there Pelagic got great roots wonderful let us let's get a Numenorean armor why not or oh, let's get army barracks first Alqualonde got a steward's hall um why did I build a steward's hall why did I do that oh I need that for barracks probably um but I also need a armory for that and Karagmir got the royal armory to reduce corruption wonderful let's get governor's quarters there Fanulond got an inn. I'm just building whatever there, but we can upgrade it. Wonderful. And Tir Ethrit got public baths. Let us get. Karnak is better not attack me, but he's been sizing up Tir Ethrit for a while now. Let's get the smoking house. And that's Fanulond. Yes. How much longer for this Gilead to be rebuilt? I really want to see it. Five more turns. Galibrin has been emptied. Where did they go, though? That is the question. Did they move towards the Black Gate? Yes, they did. But they'll be arriving too late, because I'm going to start the next episode with the Siege of Maranon. The Nazgul came back. Oh lord. <laughs> we have reached Mandoom, we're getting ever closer to reaching Baradur itself. Right, uh, I'm going to round it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. One thing I'll still do is get Duralath up here and get Siege Equipment. You know what? I'll get four pieces of Siege Equipment. Why not? Have a little fun with it. Or uh, I can only get three, but that's fine. We'll leave one slot for if we get a man of the hour, right? Or let's bring in an extra gondolin. I'll feel a little bit safer. It bothers me that he's not like nicely organized with the others, but that's okay. That's a really nice army moving up north now. If there was any, ever any doubt that we would be taken down Mordor soon, then... Let all doubts be gone, and I think the next time we train, we'll actually be sailing towards Isengard. Right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, taking Kirith Ungol and renaming it to Kirith Haldir, um, as well as taking the Hornberg, giving it back to its rightful owners of Rohan, uh, Saruman also being confirmed dead. Those are all really great advancements. The next episode will start with the Battle of the Black Gate, and just to cement that fact, I'll already queue it up, save, so there's no escaping. This will be epic to start off the next episode with. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to catch you soon for episode 23.